Hey guys, my name is Ismaus, and today I want to show you how to make a character follow a curve while also following the terrain or bumps in the terrain, uh, like you see here. So I downloaded this character from Mixamo with uh, some animation, so you can download that from there if you want. Uh, but uh, yeah, let's get into the uh, the topic. Uh, so the first thing we want to do is uh, draw the curve using a curve object. So Shift A, Bezier curve. It's going to scale it up a bit and uh, go to edit mode you can select one control point and then hold on control and then right click anywhere to have to draw different new con new control points at the point of selections so this is what we have and uh, it's going to be our uh, curve that the character is going to follow now uh, before i use the character let me just keep it simple by adding by adding a cube uh, we're going to have first of all use this and then uh, later parent the character onto the cube so that it, the setup is much easier uh, to work on. So now to make the, this cube follow uh, the curve, we just have to give it a constraint, a follow path constraint, select the path we have just drawn. And now if you play back, it doesn't really follow anything because we need to animate the curve first. So you hit the animate path and uh, you can see that uh, the curve, uh, this cube is following uh, the curve. The problem is uh, when you add a, a follow path constraint, I'm not sure why this happens always, but uh, it moves uh, the cube far away from the constraint. But uh, what you want to do is bring it back and uh, take note of this relationship line. I uh, want it to move closer so that that relationship line is almost not there, uh, it's not visible. And uh, when you have the path constraint on, and try to move the cube it moves really fast so if you want it to move slower just hit G and then shift to drag it slower and just make sure that this relationship line is uh, really short or almost none there so it's going to make sure that it's not yeah like that now you can see that uh, this is following the curve uh, but uh, it's not really following the terrain but to make it follow the, ter the terrain what you want to do is select the curve and uh, give it a shrink wrap modifier and then th select the terrain to be uh, your modifier if we play back nothing still happened this is still hovering over the surface instead of following the surface so what you want to do is click on this while you have the curve selected make sure you on the shrink wrap modifier of the curve you select this icon here you check on that icon here and that will make this cube follow the surface but uh, in some areas you notice that uh, the curve is still hovering over the surface instead of following the terrain or the surface and the reason for that is that uh, we don't have enough control points uh, for that area so just select the curve again and the subdivide now you can see that uh, whenever you subdivide uh, the curve becomes more hugs the surface more and more Another thing you can do is uh, make sure that uh, the the pivot point or make sure that uh, the the curve is closer to the surface of the object. And uh, the best way to do that is uh, by giving this, the curve, a shrink wrap constraint itself. So you select, you give it a shrink wrap constraint and uh, give it and select the surface as the shrink wrap constraint, uh, sorry, object or target. And I can see now uh, the curve hugs the surface way better like so uh, then another thing you will notice if we parent this object our character let me just go to the beginning if we parent our character so let me select this if we parent our character to to this cube You can see that uh, they are not really rotating or following the direction, rotating to the direction of the curve. Uh, if you want that to happen, what you want to do is select the cube and uh, make sure you turn on follow curve. And uh, that will make sure that uh, the character is always facing the direction of the curve. Uh, but uh, for our character, we might need to rotate them 180 degrees that way so that we are following the right direction. 
Uh, right now we see the animation is a bit too quick and uh, to control the speed of the animation we want to select the curve and uh, go to the curve settings and under path animation you can see how many frames it takes for the entire loop to complete so right now it's taking 100 frames at uh, to complete so you can see by by 100 frames i should be at this point here and uh, just to show you that's that's the length of the uh, the curve so if you wanted to take to be slower you would have to increase the number of frames it takes to get to the uh, to the last point of the curve so now you can see it's a bit slower still not slow enough so let's uh, give it about 500 frames and see how that looks so I'm also noticing that uh, this car, this is a bit you can see this is uh, running ahead of the curve uh, the reason for that is that uh, if I first check clear the the parent and uh, clear rotation as well for this object for this uh, uh, for this character um, a clear parent and clear rotation rotate 90 degrees you can see that uh, this character is also animated moving forward so uh, we don't want that if you're going to use the follow path constraint because it's going to create a few issues so what you want to do is uh, we want to go, you want to go to the curve editor i'm just using control tab to tab into the curve editor and i want to find the z location uh, because this is uh, the position at uh, the forward uh, velocity of forward movement of uh, the curve and uh, so that we can get rid of that so this is it uh, you can get rid of that it might be different for different uh, animations or characters so make sure you find uh, the the axis that is giving uh, the forward movement of to the character so in my case it was that axis and now you can see that uh, the character is staying in one position now all what is left is uh, to make it loop uh, to make it loop i'm just going to first subdivide this into or split this into another editor the nonlinear editor so that i can see this uh i don't know what to call it uh, yes the nonlinear editor and uh, make sure we have only the selected our uh, nodes are uh, visible and then just click on this to make them activated to activate them and uh, duplicate this a few times to make the animation loop or duplicated so uh, you have to loop it uh, as long as uh, the length of the timeline if you don't want the animation to pause now you can see that uh, uh, this runs continuously because we have made the animation loop and now what is left is that to parent this to the curve uh, sorry to the object that is following the curve and uh, we can get that animation uh, that you see uh, there sometimes the animation is not smooth uh, like you see right now it's, it's a bit jagged so what you can do is uh, uh, the curve you can also give the curve a smooth uh, it's called uh, smooth yeah you can smoothen the curve a bit by giving it a smoother uh, uh, smooth um, modifier so the animation is not too jagged or is not too shaky as uh, you could see as you can see now and uh, that's how you make a character follow uh, the path uh, you might also want to just make it uh, align to the rotation of the path just a bit yeah so thank you for watching i'll see you in the next video